Cuba, with its rich cultural heritage and stunning natural beauty, often captures the hearts of travelers seeking vibrant nighttime adventures. Beneath the dazzling nightlife of Havana and other cities, however, lies a hidden, darker side that seldom comes to light. Individual freedom and human rights in Cuba frequently remain overshadowed by the government's tight control. In the bustling nightclubs where salsa rhythms fill the air and mojitos flow freely, the reality isn't always as glamorous as it appears. While tourists revel in evenings filled with dance and laughter, many locals working behind the scenes earn wages that hardly reflect their hard work. This economic disparity creates a significant divide between the local residents and foreign visitors adding another layer to Cuba's complex social fabric. The nightlife in Cuba isn't just about entertainment, it's also about struggle, inequality, and restricted freedoms. At first glance, Cuba's nightlife is an enchanting mix of music, drinking, and dancing. Visitors are never short of options for clubs or bars, as most cities thrive on celebrations and festivities. From traditional venues to contemporary spots, the capital of partying has something to cater to everyone's tastes. Salsa, jazz, and live music are among the most popular choices, offering a unique and unforgettable experience for all who visit. Despite its captivating nightlife, this beautiful Caribbean island often grapples with the dark shadows of sexual exploitation and illegal drug trafficking, tarnishing its otherwise picturesque image. Prostitution, though prohibited, remains a harsh reality for many young women striving to survive amidst economic hardship. The sex tourism industry has long existed in this country, both before and after the Cuban Revolution of 1959. In Cuba, female prostitutes are known as genitaris. The majority of them are often working-class Afro-Cuban women. Here, sex workers who are black or of mixed race are typically preferred by foreign tourists seeking pleasure. In fact, UNAIDS estimates that there are about 90,000 sex workers in the country. These individuals usually operate under the umbrella of roughly 200 registered brothels in Havana though some work independently. This country is notorious as both a source and destination for adults and children who fall victim to sex trafficking. Child sex trafficking and child sex tourism are rampant in Cuba. Ironically, local government reports indicate that individuals aged between 13 and 20 are the most vulnerable to human trafficking within the nation. The problem extends beyond the borders with Cuban nationals also being trafficked for sex in South America, the Caribbean, and the United States. Human trafficking syndicates lure individuals with promises of lucrative jobs abroad. The victims are then provided with false contracts and immigration documents for a fee, subsequently forcing them into prostitution to repay exorbitant debts. Trapped in this vicious cycle, most find themselves unable to escape the bondage of these overwhelming debts. Nightlife is synonymous with the presence of stunning women who are a major draw for tourists. Many visitors come to Cuba not just for its beautiful beaches, but also to experience the vibrant and exciting nightlife the country is known for. These captivating women seem to act like magnets in bars and nightclubs which are always bustling with activity. However, nightlife isn't always glamorous. It has a darker side too. Due to the challenging economic conditions, many young women find themselves trapped in the world of prostitution as a means of survival, something we've discussed earlier. Tourists sometimes take advantage of this situation leading to the physical and emotional exploitation of many of these women. Safety is also a significant concern, as the nightlife scene often comes with a higher risk of crime in these uncontrolled environments. Such uncontrolled situations are also frequently linked to illegal drugs. 
The drug trade in Cuba has a complex history, largely influenced by the country's geographic location in the Caribbean. Cuba's strategic position makes it a potential transit route for drug smuggling from South America to the United States and Europe. The Caribbean Sea is often used by cartels to transport illicit goods through difficult-to-monitor maritime routes. Historically, Cuba's role as a central hub for trade and transportation has contributed to the development of the drug trade in the region. During the 19th and early 20th centuries, Cuba became a major producer and exporter of sugar and tobacco, grown on large plantations that required a significant labor force. This, indirectly, created an environment where the illicit trade could thrive due to the ease of transporting goods in and out of the island. Cuba has a long history, notably marked by the Cuban Revolution of 1959 which was one of the most significant events in Latin American history. This revolution ended the dictatorial regime of Fulgencio Batista and ushered in a new era under the leadership of Fidel Castro. Despite the country's many ups and downs, the government continues to carry out arbitrary detentions to harass and intimidate critics, independent activists, political opponents, and others. Unfortunately, the authorities, who are supposed to protect the public, often carry out forced arrests without showing arrest warrants when detaining their targets. These officials usually prevent or prohibit people from attending protests or demonstrations deemed sensitive. They are also aggressive in arresting critics and journalists while they are on their way to or during their assignments. However, the government has acknowledged that they have indeed punished more than 380 detainees. This significant number includes several minors who were deemed to have committed public order offenses. They were tried in summary trials on charges of causing public disorder or insults. Other cases were handled with provocation and alleged violence, such as throwing stones, leading to sentences of up to 25 years in prison. Shockingly, some of these trials were conducted in military courts, a practice that is in stark contradiction to international law. On the other hand, prosecutors play a significant role in this situation. They, along with judges, often use inadmissible or weak evidence to prosecute and punish demonstrators. Rather than upholding the right to freedom of expression, they target and penalize those who should not be blamed. The Cuban government has long been strict in controlling and filtering nearly all media within the country. Moreover, they aggressively limit access to external information and regularly censor critics and independent journalists. It was reported that in February and August of 2021, Cuban authorities expanded the number of private economic activities permitted. However, independent journalism remains prohibited. Journalists, bloggers, social media influencers, artists, and academics who publish information deemed critical of the authorities routinely face harassment, violence, smear campaigns, travel restrictions, internet cuts, raids on homes and offices, confiscation of work materials, and arbitrary arrests by the authorities. Starting in 2019, the Cuban government allowed the import of routers, private wired internet connections, and home Wi-Fi for residents and businesses. This development was a welcome change for activists who need to communicate, report abuses, and organize protests. Some journalists and bloggers have taken to publishing articles, videos, and news on websites and social media platforms, including Twitter and Facebook. However, High costs and limited access prevent most Cubans from reading independent news. The government also massively blocks access to many news sites in Cuba and has repeatedly imposed targeted and sometimes widespread restrictions on critics' access to mobile data 